drama literally is just saying words convincingly um, and trying not to make an audience laugh. Trying to make an audience laugh is infinitely harder and trying to make an audience laugh and cry um, is doubling down on how hard the, your task is. Okay, so you heard your mother tell you a story that she had read, a book she had read, and she made you want to read the book, and you went and read it, and you liked her version of it better than the book. Describe to me what that's about. Well, she just, the, you know, she, she sort of like did the kind of Cliff Notes version of the book, and she described it in a way that I felt was more cinematic than what I got from the book, and the book is, is a, is a really great read, and it's um, it's a brilliant story. But it continues after the war ends, so that it, the book actually goes on for like another ten years after the war. Um, so I felt like you know, my film. I just wanted it to be to end at a certain point. I wanted it to be like the first. Uh, I guess basically the first half of the book. And a much more humorous. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the book is. It's got a darker tone, but. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, but I couldn't uh, just again knowing myself and knowing what I, you know, uh, the stories I tell. Um, I decided that I had to put more of that stuff in, more of that humour, the imaginary Hitler and um, and all that stuff, because otherwise, I just wouldn't have felt comfortable doing a drama. So, Jojo, I'm sure we can figure out something for you to do. Oh. Ideas? Yeah. Guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, we need somebody to walk the clones. So when you write, I have this image of you stalking around your house, acting yep, things out. Yeah, that's correct. That's completely correct, actually. It's a very lonely business. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, use, I mean, I've written everything by myself um, other than uh, what we do in the shadows, which I do with my mm. mate. Um, but usually it's me pacing up and down the hallway by myself, uh, staring out the window, walking outside, saying lines of dialogue to myself, having conversations between characters, and then going, staring at the computer screen, uh, and then going to sleep. I have a thing with my body. I've, I think my body has a, um, a sort of self-defense mechanism where when it gets stressed out or it feels like it's, um, you know, if there's a deadline looming, um, I, I swear, I, I cannot stay awake. And I go to sleep, sometimes I go to sleep for 16 hours. Uh, uh, my, I just shut down. So I imagine the pitching of this must have been an odd thing. The pitching uh, of this film was, um, was always going to be awkward because uh, you can't start with, well, it's a light-hearted look at uh, you know, the um, the atrocities of World War Two. So um, it, that was always hard. But um, I said last night actually um, that the film speaks for itself, and I feel I, f I feel like the script spoke for itself when when that was like being shopped around town and in, in, uh, in Hollywood. The um, every time I tried to say what's about a young boy growing up in uh, in uh, Nazi Germany, and he. Um, yeah, he he, um, he idolizes Hitler, but then he finds out that his mother is um, is hiding this girl in the rally. And people just go, "Okay, uh, where's this going? I don't know how to really take this." But then they'd read the script, and like, and it, and it also uh, was on the blacklist, Franklin Leonard's um, uh, blacklist, and so that also gave it a lot of good attention. But um, so. Yeah, so most studios and stuff read it, and, um, and I think everyone got it more once they read it. We will crush our enemies into dust, and when they are destroyed, we shall use their graves as toilets. Okay, no more politics. Dinner is neutral ground. This table is Switzerland. Let's eat. <clears throat> and then I went and made three other movies. I went and made uh, What We Do in the Shadows, Hunt for the Wilder People, and Thor. And, um, and when I was in post-production, that's when um, Fox Searchlight came and said, we want to do uh, your weird World War II film. And I said, okay, what's wrong with you guys? And then they actually suggested, they, they said, 
uh, would prefer if you played the um, imaginary friend. Um, because usually, most studios who don't have a sort of um, a vision uh, would say, oh, we want a uh, A-lister to come and play this character because we want to make sure we make money. So it's like, um, turns out, I don't care about making money. But now they call me a scared rabbit. Let them say whatever they want. People used to say a lot of nasty things about me. Oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, look at that psycho. He's gonna get us all killed. And the imaginary friend has been created because he's lonely and he's left on his own. And as he develops a relationship with the young woman, beautifully played by Thomas and Mackenzie, um, he ends up driving Hitler back, and Hitler's threatened by this. Mm -hmm. that's, that's some of my favorite stuff is the way yeah, he Hitler's reacts. <coughs> yeah, I love that. Um, I really like the idea that it was a, a sort of like a, a weird love triangle where Hitler starts getting jealous. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it looks like you're trying to get a new best friend. And, uh, so I, and I love that idea that it's just, and that's, a, for me, a really simple way of, um, of showing the conflict in, in Jojo. Yeah, he's split between this one thing he thought he loved and this one thing that he's developing a love for. Someday you'll meet someone special. Why does everyone keep telling me that? Who else tells you that? Everyone? Anyway, it's a stupid idea. The, and then also, but what the interesting thing is, um, is looking at like what Scarlet's wearing and like what um, some of the other characters who are not in the um, the official uniforms, what they're wearing. Um, I think when you find like when you look at a lot of World War Two films, a lot of the palette is often um, you know, it's like very dulled down, and you know they um, they mute the colours um, in the films and desaturate things because they have to, we have to make it seem more depressing and you know so a lot of the films if they're not black and white are very dulled down and the tones and the palette is kind of browns and grays um and in reality i don't know if you know this uh in reality the um towards the end of the war uh in germany especially because they knew it was over and they knew the dream was over and they knew that they were probably going to die um most of the people would put on their best clothes, their brightest colors, um, put on their very best makeup, and um, and party. And the whole of Germany was like very bright and vibrant and colorful. So you know, every time you see these films, it's like oh, everyone's just dressed in brown and gray. That's not true. But Hitler himself is is the ten year old fantasy of Hitler. Mm -hmm. But it's the, the the patterns from the 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 wardrobe that he wore as well. The stuff I, that I'm wearing in, in the film, yeah, it's, it's based um, as authentically as possible on what he was wearing. And the um, so they have lightning bolts and, and all that crazy shit, all stuff. that shit they had yeah. on, yeah, yeah. And skulls, skulls and crossbones and lightning bolts and. Um, yeah, I mean, ridiculous. Those, those girls were just ridiculous. Yeah.